Hello everybody. Um, I started feeling weird yesterday. My stomach was hurting. And it was hurting me to do stuff it shouldn't normally hurt me to do. I was uh, crocheting and it was just like murder on my hands. And, and I was having muscle cramps in really weird places. Having fibromyalgia, I have muscle cramps anyway, but this is like in muscles I didn't realize I even had, like on the tops of my feet, and the bottoms of my feet, and under my arms, and uh, in between my fingers, and my fingers would do these these weird spastic things. I thought it was a little odd, and then kind of late last night, I started getting really chilled, like bad chills, and I was talking to Falcon, and I was just like, I gotta go lie down, I gotta go. I barely made it to the bed and collapsed. Lay there shivering and shaking and then sweating and oh, gross, high fever, nastiness. Was nauseated and doing this. Well, I'm not going to go into it. I threw up this morning and felt a lot better is what it comes down to. Um, my fever finally broke and um, I slept very lightly all day. Mambo kept me company. He would once in a while wake me up to make sure I was still alive. I get in my face, stepping on me, get in my face, meh, meh. And then he'd lie down up here and put his cheek against my cheek and put one of his little paws across my neck, like his arm. And he took care of me today. He would get up and get me Cokes if he could, if he had opposable thumbs. I'm sure he would have fed me crackers and whatnot. I usually only do coke on the weekends. You know, you guys know that I've um, pretty much gotten myself off soda pop, but I allow myself to have some on the weekends if I damn well feel like it. And sometimes that means just to have one of these little ones. But when my stomach's upset, I gotta have my coke. And I've had my little my little oyster crackers, better than saltines even. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better tonight. I feel completely normal temperature wise. I got terrible bad head. I need to go shower. But I was so disappointed because um, because over the weekend I went to uh, my mom and I were out going to garage sales, right? And we ended up off down this little county road, a little dark county road. And it was one of these, I love these sales. You never know what you're going to find at them. Was, um, excuse me, Coca Cola burp. It was in like, it looked like a chicken house, but it seemed to be it was somebody's, like their um, auto mechanic shop kind of buildings, corrugated metal. I think it had been a chicken house at one time because it had a big feed silo right next to it. And this kind of older man running it, excuse me, burpee. And, uh, and he was telling us that all this stuff, because I mean, it was like everything you can imagine there. And it was junky mostly. He said that, that he had gone to look at a pickup truck and a little trailer, like a camping trailer, that some little old lady had passed away, and he went to go look at the stuff, and the family said, if you will buy these two things, you can have everything else. She lived in a little mobile home. They're like, clean it out, take everything. And so he did, and you normally, I think, ooh, old lady stuff, yay! But this was like not great old lady stuff. It was blah old lady stuff. Um, most of it was pretty boring. She had been a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't know if that had something to do with it. Maybe they're not as much fun. But, um, it was a lot of stuff. And I got this one thing. Here we go. Can you see it? Can't tell if I've got it all in frame or not. It's a wall hanging. It's made out of plaster. Or cement or dark matter. I can't tell. It's extremely heavy. But, fishy, fishy, seahorse, shells, it's very dirty, it's very dirty, it seems to have been in like a storage facility or in a backyard, I don't know, but it's got like little junk all over it, but I got it for a dollar, and I'm going to repaint it, and it's going to be fun and wonderful, and it will go in my Falcon's bathroom, it will be swell, um, Goodness, I hope there's room for it on a wall somewhere. It takes up a lot of space. I had it sitting on a suitcase. It completely eclipsed the suitcase. I got that, and I was pretty thrilled about it. The rest of the stuff there was pretty crappy. Um, but I saw, kind of sitting behind something, this, this 
I don't know, I guess you could maybe call it a love seat. Would seat two people. Imagine sort of a back seat, like a bench style back seat, but on really cool chrome legs. I don't know what it originally came out of, but I said, ooh, ooh, how much for this? It was dirty. It needed to be cleaned up. It was a little rusty. The chrome was a little rusty, but you know, I just, I have this gift from God where I can see the potential in things like that, where I can see that, you know, if I cleaned it up, got rid of the rust and reupholstered it, it'd be just the sexiest piece of furniture ever. And that's how this would be. And he says, oh, I've had that in my shop for 10 years or how many ever years. And, uh, and it's so comfortable. Sit down on it. Well, I didn't really want to sit down on it because it was really dirty. But I sort of did anyway. It was all springy and wonderful. And I thought this would be great right in front of a, like a TV to play video games or anywhere. I mean, it's a great piece of furniture. It just needs some TLC. And he told me 20 bucks for it. I couldn't bring it home because all we had was my mom's little Honda Accord and it wasn't going to fit in there. And he said that if I would buy it, come back Monday or Tuesday for it, that he would put it in his pickup truck and haul it to my house. So, I was pretty excited about that. Okay, I was going to go Monday, but Mom said that she had an appointment to have the oil changed in her car, so I couldn't go Monday. Clearly, today, I was sick with the stomach flu all day. Couldn't go. So, I'm going to try to go tomorrow and hope that he's around and that, uh, you know, I don't think he sold it to anybody else who didn't have a price on it. I don't think anybody else would look at it and go, ooh, sexy piece of furniture in the making. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to find him and get it from him. Even maybe next weekend. Who knows? I'll keep going back there um, until I find him home because I really, really want it. So um, I think it would go great with the rest of my kind of fun retro stuff. So we'll see. Um, like I said, I was, there's a small ball of plarn. I've been making plarn, seems non-stop for about a week now. I love it. I'm, I'm addicted to making it. I'm thinking about maybe even making it to sell, maybe on Etsy. I think there's a little bit of a market for it. Um... But I've also been working on this bag. I've been working on this arm bag. It's enormous. But I like it with the stripe down the middle. This is liquor store bags. These were Walmart bags from back when Walmart was still using white with black lettering. And I'm very sad that they've gone to white with blue letter. Because I love black and white. Um, I think I'm going to put an ad in the Fayetteville Free Cycle and see see if anybody has back everybody's got bags and bags and bags and bags at their house um so i'm gonna see if people will donate them to me it'd be great so anyway these are liquor store bags but i ran out at some point and although the whole idea of this is to reuse things that you know would be thrown thrown out or whatever I ran out and I didn't have any more liquor store bags, so I took a big garbage bag and made porn, and part of it's garbage bag, but it's a totally different texture, and it's flimsier, oh, it's flimsier, and it was hard to, to crochet with because it's kind of kind of sticky, as to where bags like you get from a store are kind of slick, garbage bags are kind of sticky, but I think it's sexy, and I've got maybe one or two more rounds to go with this white and black, and then I'll make the handles. I'm a little unclear looking at the the instructions on how that's going to happen, but I found that with crochet, if I just take it one step at a time and don't worry too much about reading the directions too far ahead, it works out just fine. Um, so anyway, that's fun, and it's one thing I really like about it is that it works up super fast. It's sort of an instant gratification project, which is great. And one thing I was I've been looking around and seeing that. Um, Women in Zambia, I think, make the plarn stuff for sale. I don't know, to tourists or who they're selling them to. But it helps them support their villages and whatnot, which is great. Same thing for the paper beads. There's, uh, I forget what part of Africa, but there are women in Kenya, I think. They do that. And also there's women. there are women there who um, take telephone wire, which is colored, you know. Some have stripes on them and whatnot. And um, 
and make baskets and such and I've wanted to try my hand at that for a long time because I used to make baskets I made it out of raffia and natural things like if you sent me out in the woods with a pair of clippers um, and left me in there long enough I'd come out with lovely baskets because I know how to do such things um, but what was my point in that my point being that oh I've seen um, the plarn stuff like really bright colors and I thought who the hell in Africa what store is giving them products in bright colored bags you just don't see that so um, I went and researched a little and found that some people are using plastic uh, tablecloths so I bought two plastic tablecloths at a yard sale still in their package one's yellow and one's kind of striped orange and yellow and brown and I'm gonna use those and I may cheat a little bit and, and buy tablecloths at the Dollar Tree to use in these projects because the color is so fun, you know. Oh, Falcon's calling me. I gotta go.